Hey there, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group with your end of day recap for Wednesday, Fed Day. So what a huge uh, day for the market today. Um, really, you know, something that I think we, was a little bit overdue. Um, you know, obviously there was a big overhang today waiting for what the Fed was going to do. You know, there's a little bit of uncertainty today. Uh, we were kind of thinking that it would be not, not, not exactly a non-event, but no, you know, no major reaction was really going to come out of um, Yellen this morning or this afternoon in terms of doing anything differently than what she's been doing since she's taken over as, as Fed chair. You know, she's basically been been saying every time there's a there's a there's a meeting that uh, she's data dependent and she's going to wait for the data. So, you know. Every time we get one of these meetings, there's speculators, you know, and the, and the speculation re really got a little bit heated in terms of how many rate hikes people were saying, four rate hikes, you know, that's how many we're, we're going to have this year. You know, she's not going to do anything um, until she finds out if inflation is really going to heat up a little bit. So, uh, you know, the fact that she came out and said the same thing that she says every time is not a shocker at all. Um, so, you know, obviously very happy to see the market rally at the at the end of the day. Um, large caps, you know, we could see a little bit of a skid at the end of the day, um, but, uh, you know, up 70 basis points. Um, NASDAQ, which was really kind of struggling throughout the day uh, until uh, Yellen spoke or until the announcement came up, um, ended up very nicely. And uh, small caps were the main story of the day, uh, up 1.6% 1 1 of the day. You know, these were in danger of breaking down yesterday. They kind of were saved. And we talked about this in yesterday's video, how it was just kind of hammer city uh, all over the, or hammer time, uh, all, all over the charts yesterday where things started to go lower, they kind of broke, and then they climbed back into the range that they were in. So we saw this, you know, several places yesterday. I put this in the recap yesterday. This was in oil. This was in a couple different oil names as well. Besides small caps, there was a couple other things where we where we saved the price actions. So today, so just a much different picture than where we were yesterday. You know, complete kind of uh, turnaround. But um, you know, everything looks looks pretty good here in the charts. And uh, you know, besides a little bit of a fade at the end of the day. Really strong performance, really strong market breath. Um, you know, we we are still working off like a negative MACD cross. So you know, I think we're we're um, as I said in, in last week's newsletter. Um, if you're a subscriber of the Tribeca Trade Group, you know, I've been kind of saying that uh, you know we we have a lot of events this week, but I think you know, and I thought we were gearing up for to take that next move higher. Just have to kind of work your way through, you know, the market ebbs and flows as we've, as we've talked about. So, you know, we got really overbought a couple of weeks ago. And since then, we've been digesting and kind of waiting for the guidance that is kind of sitting and overhanging the market. Um, you know, in terms of today's, you know, other things that came out of today, you know, I have up uh, interest rate expectations just to kind of see where these kind of uh, fell or left off for the end of the day. You know, May rate hike, um, we're looking at a 13% chance. So, we'll, you know, we'll have to keep an, keep an eye on this, but we don't really have anything for, for two months, you know, in terms of an next rate, rate hike. So, we've, we've got some open road ahead of us. Um, uh, you know, and then June, it looks like a 50% chance of a rate hike. So that's, you know, that's where we are after the today's Fed meeting. Um, you know, just to talk about a little bit about, you know, U.S. economics, because uh, Janet Yellen did, did make reference to inflation. And the 2% is what she's looking at. It's a you know, 2% inflation rate where things get a little bit dicey, but we're, we're well below there. So what she talked about is exactly what we talked about in the trading room earlier in the day. You know, what she was going to talk about was, hey, in, uh, inflation has a little bit of an uptick to it, but it's not anywhere near a dangerous zone. So you know, markets are going to be in a, are in the sweet spot right now where there's a little bit of inflation, but certainly not a lot. And, you know, things like retail sales are ticking up just a little bit, but not crazy. So we're not overheated and we're just moving at a gradual pace. You know, this, I can't think of a better, of a better setup uh, right now in terms of economics and, and in terms of, of slowly raising interest rates. Uh, I, I just think we're, we're in a, in a really nice sweet zone. You know, things will always, things will change and, you know, we'll see what the economics come out, you know, in the future. But for right now, things just slowly moving up. They don't need to, you know, slam on the accelerator in terms of raising interest rates. So let's just talk about some other moves in the market today. 
Um, there's no longer DX in the uh, in Thinkorswim, which I don't know why. They, I, well, they they took it off because I know they're paying fees for it, but um, it, it is what it is. So we can look at UUP, which is the dollar ETF, but we'll show you the same thing. But you know that this was the um, the the major reason. So when you talk about less possibility of uh, interest rate hikes from what the market was expecting. Uh, you could see what happens, the dollar sells off, and then all these areas that have been kind of moving down, uh, all the steel names, steel names were down over 6% last week, the steel ETF, you could look at S SLX, um, that just regained about 5% of last week's loss all in one day, so really nice move back and uh, to some oversold you know areas and uh, there wasn't that much damage done in SLX but if you look at some names where we saw some call buying in today cliffs uh, we saw some call buying in valet yesterday which was a which is which was a home run today uh, in terms of uh, Tribeca Trade Group trades that we put on, we put on the short-term trade yesterday in uh, in valet uh, for 32 cents and it's marking at 80 cents right now so uh, that was the way to go and um, also the gold miners uh, but I wanted to show a couple other things before we get to that. Um, a couple trades. I mean, look at FCX reclaiming the 200-day moving average. Um, I did put on it. Re I re-added a swing trade uh, today in FCX. Uh, you know, using the 200-day moving average. I've tried this a couple days ago and took it off for like a really small loss and just took another swing at it. There's no problem with taking. You know, if things fail on the 200-day moving average, I can get out of them for a small loss um, and get and then, and I have no problem getting right back into it. So FCX, huge winner. Um, ECA, um, I struggled with this one yesterday as it moved lower and broke down below the 200-day moving average. I actually sold out of July calls and put October calls on. So, um, you know, I talked about, I didn't take any profits in this trade until the end of the day. I said this thing has a chance to go up 7%. It went up 6.8%. That was close enough. I took a, took a target on it. It's got the 20-period exponential moving average in front of it. It also has 11.79, but man, they've been buying an awful lot of ECA calls. Um, and a nice hold. So, I, you know, regardless of this uh, resistance ahead of it, I would like to just stay long against the 200-day moving average. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to try to do with the um, with the remaining of the balance of those. Uh, so what else? We talked about that. Um, I think I talked talked about Cliff's calls just going nuts today. Um, they really went after Cliff after the Fed announcement. Uh, they went out, they got up to 11,000 of those. Just so repeat, repeat call buying. I did not take this one today because I was already long uh, very similar trades, Valet, and um, I got involved in, uh, in FCX as well. So I just couldn't take another one of these, even though they just kept on going after those uh, May calls. Um, on the tech space, it was pretty quiet today until this afternoon, and we saw re repeat call buying in AMD, um, which really didn't do too much today. But uh, you know, they they went after these calls after the Fed as well. Uh, mainly the if I can find these here, the, mainly the July calls were the major ones that were swept. Um, WDC, we also saw some call buying in this one. Uh, this name finally got going. Uh, there was some call buying a couple weeks ago, and the name kind of fell on its face. Not, I mean, not horrible, but uh, just kind of stalled out here um, inside the value area. So maybe may, this will make another run at, uh, at the top of value. Um, other than that, the gold miners, you know, again, when the dollar moves down, uh, you know, and when the dollar moves down, uh, gold had a huge day up 1.8% today. So, uh, you know, these gold, these gold miners just, uh, are so volatile that they'll have moves like this today on, on fed days. Uh, GDXJ was up 11% today. Uh, you know, it was down, I think about 5% yesterday. I mean, just this week alone, the swings that we're seeing in this thing is, is, is pretty remarkable. Uh, GDXJ. So if I go to, uh, the performance up 4% on Monday, down 6% yesterday and up 11.5% today. Uh, you know, <laughs> this is a not easy, uh, not an easy uh, group to kind of uh, to buy and hold considering the swings. But um, I held on to ABX. Uh, it closed below the 200 day moving average. But I said, you know what, I'm not going to close this thing right before a Fed day because I know that this can happen. So um, ABX I put on a couple days ago, got a little bit of uh, shaky knees yesterday with this thing. Um, but a big move today, big move into value as well. Um, I like this name, number one. It found some support at the 200-day moving average. Uh, number two, it had a really good earnings quarter as well and moved up on earnings, but you know the overall move in gold miners and so forth has been down lately. So um, a nice little dip buyer in this, uh, in this one. 
and I was able to um, to cash out on some profits today. So still holding this position, but on a day when it's up 7%, um, I don't mind taking a, a, a little bit off here and then holding the rest. Um, and that was kind of the theme of today, uh, you know, doing that in a bunch of positions. When you have the market up as much as it was, IWM up 1.6%, you know, you kind of uh, have to take some of this money off the table. Um, and then kind of sit with the profits and then use some trailing stops. So that's what I'm uh, doing in a couple names that were some really big winners. Um, what other, a couple other uh, names that hit the tape that I really liked, uh, PNR, Pentair. Um, I just really liked the chart. There was a nice aggressive call buyer today in PNR, not a name that we see a lot of call buying in, but these were the May 65 calls. And, you know, this is partially uh, why I'm, I'm looking at option activity all all day. I would never uh, buy PNR if I if I didn't see a call buyer, which would kind of turn me into turn me onto the chart, you know, taking a look at the daily chart. You know, again, 200 day moving average, nice move above it. And you got a lot of upside I see to this chart from where it used to be. It used to be an $83 stock, now 62. Um, sure, I'm going to use the 200 day moving average as a as a stop in this one. Um, there was a really small trade in, in OI as well, which I took a smaller trade in. But again, same type of chart, same type of thing. You know, uh, didn't really break the 200 day moving average, but um, very close to it. You know, this was a name that was 34, now trading down to 20. Sure, um, I took a shot in this one. I think there were some April calls. I actually went out to May. A um, couple other themes of the day. Uh, more maxim call by, calls being bought. Uh, I think I covered this one in the video last night, but I talked about how I really liked the the break of the value and then an inside day. And sure enough, we have, we're up 1% today and breaking out. Um, another name that's doing that in the space is Teradyne. Um, a lot of July calls that have went up in this one. See that, sorry, either June or July, uh, but huge day in this one up 2%. And, uh, you know, stick with these names. Look at, I mean, look at the recent uh, MACD crossover. Um, so really nice, just that's a fresh MACD crossover we talked about. Uh, there's also a nice call buyer uh, buyer in KKR. I did not take this trade uh, today. I'm already long BX, but a nice June call buyer in, um, in another private equity name. Uh, we talked about ABX. We talked about OI. Um, we talked about FCX reclaiming the 200-day moving average, also seeing April and uh, April and January call buyers in, in that name. Tesla, there was a little bit of a call buyer as well this morning. Uh, lo and behold, uh, there was some news on Tesla after the close. Uh, you have, by the way, I, you know, I like this as well today. I took a shot at Tesla today. It did not work. Um, but, uh, you know, the daily chart looks fine with the, um, uh, with just basically an inside day after after Tuesday's really nice, uh, really nice, powerful day. And then there's some news. It was up. Yep, it's still, it's still up. So I actually uh, lost a little bit of money on a weekly play and moved it over into a swing trade into an April call spread. So um, I should be sitting pretty if uh, Tesla opens up here tomorrow. But again, really like the, uh, the chart in Tesla. Uh, now that it's it held the bottom of value very nicely, and I think it may be on the way to 273. I uh, don't see any resistance until we get until we get to 273 top of value. Um, just besides that, uh, you know, outside of that, I, I did a deep dive into India and ADRs, considering what EPI is doing. Um, EPI was up two percent today uh, because of the dollar. You know, all of the international ETFs. Uh, that have dollar exposure, you know, by default, they all do, um, you know, unless it's, unless the ETF specifically says that it hedges out the currency exposure. So you, you, you may have noticed all these names got a really big bid today. Again, that's all the dollar weakness. When you own something like EEM or when you own uh, VGK, which is the European ETF, you actually are basically short the US dollar. So or you're long foreign currency. Um, a lot of people don't say that or they, they think there's a positive correlation, but no, you're actually, you're holding foreign securities um, in a dollar denominated, dollar denominated product. So um, that is why a lot of these names really shot up uh, really well today because the dollar was down over a percent. So you're going to see these things move. And uh, sure enough, you, you did see a lot of those. But just going back to, to, to the strength that's been taking place in, in India. I, so I went through a bunch of different ADRs. Uh, one of the ones that I like the best is, uh, is IBN. Um, this is one of the banks over there. Um, you actually have to scale out a little bit. 
go to the 10 year chart, but you can see the stock was um, got to a high of 13. You know, it's above, we can actually see this on Bloomberg a little bit better uh, with the moving averages. So if I just change this and I put this to, let's say a three year chart, uh, you could see that uh, the 50 day moving average just crossed above the 100 day moving average. Um, so the price action is now above all of the major moving averages. And I want to stay long uh, or, or want to be long as long as we're um, above these moving averages. So that that was another uh, this is a trade that I put on in cash. It's an eight dollar stock. So, um, you know, this one you don't necessarily have to play in options. So um, one final thing. I, I know there's a, there's a lot to talk about today. Um, home builders, uh, you know, really nice. Um, home builder sediment uh, out. I think it's the strongest since 2005 sediment for the home builders. Um, these have been breaking out like crazy. And, you know, today, you, you, I didn't step into a trade today because I figured, hey, we got the Fed announcement and there's a lot of interest rate uh, implications with home builders. But, um, uh, wow, KGC just confirms offer from Virtu. I believe there was some calls going up in this one at the end of the day. Uh, so anyway, um, <laughs> that headline just hit the tape right now. I can't believe it. Uh, I think there was some KGC that went up. It was either KGC or KCG uh, calls that went up right before the close. Yep, three minutes before the close. I cannot believe it. Um, anyway, so home builders. It, being that we're not, uh, interest rates went, TLT rallied today, bonds, bond prices went up, yields went down, should be really good for the home builders. Um, I'm going to be looking at, at some longs in this space uh, because they are completely breaking out here. So that's today's video. Have a great night and uh, thank you for watching.